You know what, yeah? I literally got my leg up on my table right now. And I'm completing one of my electrical certificates, isn't it? And I'm listening to one of my YouTube videos. So, obviously, man produce a video, slap it on private. And before I upload it, I always watch it first, isn't it? Even if I'm not going to upload it for four or five months, whatever, innit? I always make sure I watch it first, so I at least listen to it, innit? And this video that I'm watching now, obviously you lot can't see it, but you will eventually, innit? Yeah. Man's talking about black businesses and why a lot of them Caribbean shops don't last long, innit? And one of the f major reasons why a lot of... I'm talking about in regards to restaurants as well, but you know what? This can apply to other black-owned businesses as well, you know? One of the reasons why a lot of the Jamaican shops, and when I say Jamaican shops, I just mean, like, whether they're English-born or actually from Jamaica, or you know what? Caribbean shops anyway, black-owned black, black -owned businesses and that. The reason why they fail is because the owners, them, don't want to put in the fucking work. In this particular video I was talking about, I was saying that um, their man, they put their prices up sky high. And, you know, when the profits don't come in and that, and obviously the rent's quite high up or whatever, business insurance and that, they end up going bust. And then a thought came to my head as well. So I'm still running with, obviously, the Jamaican shops and that, Caribbean shops and that, putting their prices up sky high and that. But another thought that came to my mind was a lot of black business owners... They don't want to put in the fucking work. Yeah, 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 yeah. Their man, they don't want to grind. Yeah. What they want to do is they want to invest in a business, whether they throw 10, 20, 30 grand at a business, and hopefully watch it grow without putting in any fucking work. That's one of the reasons why a lot of black businesses fail. Because the owners, them, just want to put money into the business so they can go and do whatever they want on the side and not put no fucking hard work Hard grind, no sweat, no tears into that Ross Clark business. If you start a business, you, you're going to need to be prepared to work 14, 16 hours a day. If you're not willing to work, willing to work 14, 16 hours a day on your business or whatever, or building up anything, that means you don't really have a passion for it. If you're not willing to actually be on the front line, you don't have a passion for it. Like, even with me, like with my, my flat, that's... <laughs> this. I said to my supervisor yesterday, yeah, this flat has... This project at my flat has been going on for fucking... What? Talking like nine months now, whatever, innit? But obviously, man's working... And that, innit? So I don't always have time to go and tend to my flat or whatever, anymore. Um, yeah, with my flat, man's actually putting in the work myself. Actually, literally, hands on. Can't call yourself a property developer. Well, you can, you can call yourself a property developer, but you ain't a real property developer until you actually put in the hard work, hard grind yourself. Yeah. yeah. Because there's a lot of men that think they're property developers and that, and they're getting ripped off. They're getting ripped off. Or they have to um, employ people that are going to do work for dirt cheap just to get a good rate and that. A lot of people ain't willing to put in no work. Yeah, man, them black businesses and that, man, one thing they need to incorporate is... A hands-on approach to their business. Instead of just throwing money at a business and hoping that it fucking grows. Now there's one shop in Tottenham that man used to go to all the time. Called Juicy Roots. It's still there now. The shop's been there for a good while. Yeah, it survived that. You know that, oh, a business ain't going to last more than five years or everything. Yeah, it done surpassed that. Do you know why? Because big up to man like Bobby who owns Juicy Roots, Lordship Lane, N17, go check it out, innit? Uh, big man Bobby who runs the shop actually works in the shop. Yeah, yeah. My man's in the kitchen. My man's on tills when I used to go there. My man's doing deliveries. Running Costco or wherever he gets his things from, innit?
My man said, actually, hands on. My man's actually hands on. That's why businesses, that's why businesses like that survive. No matter how small they are, they still survive because the owners them are willing to work and willing to be hands on and that. Even my my mechanic, lady, you know, Karen, slim white lady. She's hands on. You know why? Because she actually works in her garage. So my mechanic, my motorbike mechanic is a lady uh, called Karen. Cool lady, isn't it? My motorbike garage is in Tottenham, isn't it? She's the owner of the business and she is a mechanic who works there every fucking day. Obviously, there might be the odd day or whatever where she's not there or whatever, innit? But she works there. Literally, when I pull up and I'm wanna get my bike serviced and repaired and that, she's there. She's there, literally. I see her underneath you know, get me tight enough exhaust and that. She ain't trying to be like one of these business owners. Whoosh, whoosh. Yeah, just dishing out orders and that. Nah, man, in life, man, you have to be willing to get your hands dirty and be hands-on, man. Literally. Anything that you're building up, be willing to get your hands dirty, get involved, and when it gets to a certain stage where you can, you know, take a step back, do that. Take a step back, do that. Like, Big up to my auntie, not my biological auntie, innit? But man, see her like my biological auntie still, in it, yeah? Auntie Walata. So she um has a solicitor's firm, innit? And I don't know what level, what stage is at now, but she has a solicitor's firm, whatever, innit? And she said she was going to look to employ someone uh, to do little bits and pieces. And I said, she said, you know what? I ain't going to do that. I'm going to wait until I'm so busy where I need to be in three places at once. Then I'm gonna employ someone. That's the mentality you need to have. Not, oh yeah, I want my life to be easy. See, everyone, see, this is the thing. This is why people don't have successful businesses and that, and they don't get far in life. Because people think about setting up a business, and the first thing they think of is how much money they're gonna earn, and they're gonna be on some beach drinking pineapple juice, uh, or is it swinging from side to side in one of them hammock things or whatever in it, blood. If you think if you think that's gonna be you within the first year or two, yeah, you, you, you're fucking you're living in a dream world, man. Maybe in about fifteen years, yeah. Maybe in about fifteen years. When I say you know drinking pineapple juice on some island, whatever, I mean like you could do that every single day. Obviously, any idiot can take one week out and go on, on some island or whatever, innit? But people, all people see is. The pretty side of the business yeah yeah making money and that well how do you think people got to the stage where they're making money they have to put in a fucking grind jeff bezos you must have seen that picture my man's just in a room like office probably an office room like a, a room in his yard he turned it into his office my man had a picture just a little poster had the word amazon written behind him started his business on his own started it from his house there's one guy, uh, he owns that um, Plimico Plumbers business. Again, a man bought a van, started doing local one, two plumbing jobs, next thing you know. Again, like my auntie will laugh. Too busy to handle all the jobs, needs to be in three places. I went, bam, okay, I'm going to get one, two men to hire, uh, to, to do some work for me or whatever, really. and boom, next thing you know, multi million pound business. It starts with getting your hands dirty and putting in the grind. Again, drug dealers in that. Yeah, them man they grind, don't get it twisted. Them man they up and down grinding in that. But them man they don't want to do the real grind. The grind in the classroom. Yeah, that's the that's the real grind. Because the grind in the classroom, you don't see results from that straight away. Yeah, yeah, you don't you don't you don't you don't see no results from that straight away when you're in the classroom. You be grinding for three years, not getting paid a penny. Whereas the drug dealers, them they're getting paid on the day. Yeah, they're getting paid every transaction. That when you're in the classroom, you ain't getting paid nothing at that point in time. 
But when you're patient, your hard work and your hard grind comes back in a few years to pay you. Again, man's putting the work in the classroom and that. When I was in college, I wasn't getting paid none. I wasn't getting paid nothing in my classroom. Years later, £300 a day, sitting in the office, chatting. Now, I'm doing this testing job. All right, things are slowed down. And I've spoken about what, what's going to be happening in, in another video, on it? Um, so look out for that one. But anyway, man's earning £300 a day, £365 a day, testing. Take down one, two lies. Beep, 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 get a couple test readings, test results. Plug in a couple sockets, couple test results and that. Have one, two chat with the tenants and that. Getting paid 300, 360 pound a day. Anyway, my, I'm going to put my leg down because my fucking legs are in from putting it on this table. But yeah, man. That's why I shared that one there, man. The reason why a lot of these businesses fail and that is because the owners them ain't even willing to put in the fucking work. They don't want to get their hands dirty. And they wonder why the business goes bust. They should put in... The reason why the business goes bust as well, because they're not willing to put in the work themselves, they have to pay people to run their shop. So we're talking about the Caribbean shops now, ain't it? Yeah. So the Caribbean shop owners don't want to put in the work themselves. So what they have to do is they have to pay people to stand on the shop front and serve people and that. And then when obviously the business is not making as much money as anticipated or whatever, ain't it? Yeah? they don't want to put in the work. So they just close the business down and waste their money. Whereas if they was in the shop themselves, yeah, they're going to be stressed. Yeah, they're going to be working 14, 16 hours. At least if the business is earning that much money and it's going through a slow, rough patch, then they can say, well, boy, I'm the only person that needs to get paid or whatever. And I can live a minimalistic lifestyle until things pick up and that. But if you're paying someone else, you ain't got that option to um, live a minimalistic lifestyle or whatever. And people forget paid, innit? you can't cut people's wages down enough. Like, people are just going to leave. Well, you can cut people's wages down, but they're just going to leave. Then you ain't going to have no staff to pay. If you ain't got no staff, you ain't got no business. So, yeah. Anyway, 12 minutes and 40 seconds. This video is supposed to be about three minutes long, and it's done now. Stay where it's done now, done now, done now.